Seattle. So, you know, I grew up in University Place. I've lived in Greenwood. I love Seattle. So this is like home con for me, which is good and bad because I have lots of friends, which is great. And then the bad part is I have lots of friends. <laughs> I want to spend a lot of time. And so trying to fit everyone in, and I see a lot of you guys in the audience. So thank you. Um, I started cosplaying in 2008. I went to my first convention. Like, I had no idea these kind of conventions even existed. Like, I read comics, did not know that, you know, comic book conventions existed and that people went to them and they dressed up. And I went to my first one, it was Anime Matsuri down in Texas. Uh, and I saw these huge elaborate costumes and I was like, oh, okay, I really want to do that. So I bought my first costume online and it was horrible. I looked like a giant like marshmallow. It was like way too big, nothing fit. And then after that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start making these costumes. Um, and then crazy things started making costumes, learned how to sew, and you know, years later, here I am. It's it's been a crazy ride, and I thank a lot of you for sticking with me through it and following it. Um, so thank you. Um, hmm, I really don't know what to say. I feel kind of conceited up here by myself. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna open it to any questions anyone might have. I know, it's really, I, I'm just me. This is really weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is interesting for me. This is a first. But um, does anyone have any questions? Anything? What's your favorite costume that you've done? You know, actually my favorite one is Supergirl. Um, and really because, you know, when I cosplay, I kind of feel like I become the character a little bit. And so with Supergirl, when I first started cosplaying, I was super shy. I've always been, like, I was really overweight as a kid, so I've always been super shy and nervous around people. And I found that the more I cosplayed, and especially the more I cosplayed as Supergirl, I kind of became more confident, and it, it brought me out of, like, kind of that um, nervousness. And so, like, if you told me four years ago I'd be up here talking in front of this room, I would not believe you. <laughs> I would be running out the door right now. <laughs> so I think, you know, a, a lot has happened to give me confidence through cosplay. So it's definitely Supergirl. I feel powerful. Anyone else? Oh, there's a mic. Haha, <laughs> I have a mic. <laughs> Yay. DJ mic on the mic. I'll just there you go. <laughs> what, what, what would be your most elaborate costume like that you've ever done? Oh, I would have to say I did, um, it was Vocaloid, and it was Luca, which was like this huge ball gown, and it was just like, I'd never made a ball, ball gown. I didn't know that you have to like add length to it to accommodate this huge hoop skirt, and then thinking about, you know, how am I gonna get, how am I gonna get through doors? <laughs> how am I gonna, the escalators are a problem, because you don't really fit, so, um, it was it was really hard because I had to take that into consideration while I was making it and it's like there's so many different parts. I mean, I watched so many YouTube tutorials on like how to make a bustle, how to make a skirt hoop, how to, like it was everything. So that one was one where I was a little bit way over my head, but I just took it one piece at a time and tackled it. So that would be the one. How was it doing competitions? Ooh, competitions are fun. I like doing them. Um, it's really hard for me, I think, because I'm, I'm very self-conscious, you know? And so I have that thing where you look, look at someone's costume and you're like, oh, man, that's so good. <laughs> um, so I like doing competitions mainly because I can interact with the contestants more and I can pick their brains about how they make their costumes. Because um, I like having that, like, background knowledge where you can say, hey, dude, I really love that. Like, how did you make that? And for me, it's more being able to see the, um, the other competitors up close. Or I, competitors is weird, but <laughs> it's getting to see their stuff up close. Um, for me, it's just fun to enter, but uh, it's a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> What advice do you have to get started? Like, do you go online for a costume or? Um, it depends, you know? I think there's no wrong or right to cosplay, whether you want to order it online or you want to put it together from your closet or put it together yourself from scratch. Um, it's whatever you feel the most comfortable with. I always encourage people, try sewing, you know? I didn't know how to sew when I first started. 
I watched YouTube tutorials and got a cheap sewing machine and just practiced. Um, so it's, you know, whatever angle you want to do, it, there's a lot of good websites and resources on where to buy costumes. Um, there's a lot of, like if you go on Etsy, there's a lot of people that will, uh, you can commission costumes from, that's another route to go. Um, and then if you want to make it, just YouTube tutorials. They really, really help. That's what I used, so. Why do, why do you like to cosplay? I like to cosplay because for me, it's a chance to be my favorite characters. Um, I grew up, all the characters that I cosplay as are characters that I love. Um, and so it's a chance for me to be Supergirl or to be Zatanna. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's fun. I, I, it gives me confidence. Um, I think it's one of those things, it's, it's just a fun thing to do, and I, I have so much fun, so that's kind of why I cosplay. Why do you like, um, how long have you been doing cosplay? <laughs> I've been doing cosplay since 2007, so about seven years now. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> Where are the best places to get like good costume fabric? Because Joanna Fabrics yeah. has quilting stuff, but like to find like a green leather for an arrow, green arrow costume is like impossible to find. Yeah, um, fabric.com, I try them and definitely get swatches because you really can't tell what um, their fabrics look like online. Um, I use that, I get their swatches. The only thing you have to worry about sometimes is their inventory is not right online. I've had that happen to me. Um, spandex World is a great reference, like, if you want spandex, it's like anything you could ever want that's stretchy. Um, for leather, Tandy Leather does a lot of really good stuff for that. Um, and then for, like, Warbler and stuff, I say, like, CosplaySupplies.com. <laughs> Like, if there's no more questions, I'll just start telling embarrassing stories. <laughs> Is there any outfits that you want to do that you haven't done up yet? Oh, <laughs> Tron. I really want to do a Tron Cora outfit. I really do. Um, EL lights and wires scare me a little bit. Because I'm not very, I've never tried it, but it's one of those... It's one of those things I tell myself, like, this is my biggest piece of advice is to never be intimidated by something because you never know, like, what you can do until you try. So, yeah, it's definitely one of those ones that's on my list. I just got to stop, like, psyching myself out about the, like, wire. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I should. I need to live by my motto. <laughs> um, you know, that's hard. Uh... For me, I do a lot of like recycling of costumes. Um, one of the things, especially when I first started out, uh, and I didn't have like a lot of money for, for costuming and stuff, uh, was I used to sell a lot of my costumes. So if I, and I actually do that once a year, I kind of do like a spring cleaning, and it's like, you know, if I'm never gonna wear it again, I know someone else would appreciate it and give it some love. So um, I do that. I just, I do a lot of bargain, like, uh, like thrift store shopping. Uh, I do a lot of price comparing on eBay. eBay is my best friend. <laughs> I love eBay uh, for, for cheap uh, products that you might need. Um, yeah, I do just a lot of bargain hunting. Uh, it's not technically hoarding if you're going to use it eventually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if I find something that's like really cheap and you know, I might use it down the line, I kind of just pick it up. You know, four years, four years later, I use it, so it's worth it. <laughs> Anyone else? Ooh, I really like your costume. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, so do you have any tips and tricks for um, competition? For competition? Um, let's see. I would say go out there and, and go out with confidence. Um, I think one of the things... It's a lot of just go out and have fun with it. You know, you see the people and they're kind of nervous. And it's like, just go out there. Because, you know, when you go out um, onto the stage, everyone just wants to see your costumes and see you have fun. Um, don't worry about what people think. Um, as far as, like, construction-wise, um, you know, a lot of competitions look at your craftsmanship. So, you know, clean seams making sure that everything, you know, your stitching's as straight as possible, stuff like that. You don't want things to fall off on stage. I've had that happen before. 
There was this guy, he had a really great costume, and then his cod piece fell off <laughs> on stage. <laughs> it was really funny, so that's, a, that's another one, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> it fell off on stage. I've actually seen a couple of things fall off on stage before, and you're just like, oh, I can't, like, ah. Oh. Can't give you points when it falls apart. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. There's, oh God, I think it's Pacific, Pacific Linens or something like that up the street. That's what it is, Pacific, Pacific Fabrics. There's a really good like bead shop over near Northgate Mall. Um, it's like bead world, and it's like if you need beads, jewelry pieces, accents, they've got it. Um, there's a costume shop near Northgate as well that has some fabric. Which one is it? Look at this guy. He's got all the answers. Yeah, display and costumes. They've got a lot of stuff. Um, so those are my, like, recommendations as far as fabrics for Seattle. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. You know, I've done one, and it was me dressed as Master Roshi. I'm not even kidding you. It was because I made my friend be Bunny Bulma, and he's like a six-foot-four Marine <laughs> with, with stripper heels. Um, <laughs> he walked around all of Dragon Con with them. But yeah, no, so Master Roshi, that was interesting. Dragon Con in a bald cap and a beard. Um, for me, I think it's, uh, if you're going the other way, you know, from a male to a female character, it's all about comfort and being able to have, I mean, men are capable of wearing like this, this huge armor and I don't know how you guys are supposed to like fight in it. Um, I, you know, it's a lot of like compacting it down for a female frame. Um, and then, you know, just some things kind of work better on guys, like, you know, breastplates, you kind of have to adjust and everything like that. Um, the other way, it's a lot of binding, <laughs> a lot of taping yourself down. Um, and uh, it's just, I, I guess it depends on what route you want to go. Some people kind of change it all up and, and make it, a very different costume in a way and then some go straight up like I just look straight like Master Roshi so I mean I, I think it, it gives that creativity where you can be a little bit more original with it so um, yeah I think there's no really wrong way of doing it um, just kind of figure out which angle you want to go <laughs> anyone I'll, I'll tell embarrassing stories I all right, let's see. Hmm. See, my biggest advice for costumes is, one, having pockets. Pockets in your costumes is always a good idea. I always forget that. And two, make sure you have an easily accessible way to use the restroom. I learned that the hard way at San Diego Comic Con. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm dressed as great, say a woman, you know, one full piece, almost like a Zentai suit with the, the zipper in the back. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just be gone for like five minutes. Bathrooms are right there. I'm just going to go use the bathroom. I get in there, and I'm like, wait, I, ca I can't reach. I can't reach the zipper. So I'm like going around in the bathroom like, okay, I know this sounds weird, and I don't know any of you, but can someone unzip me? So I'm having to have some random stranger unzip me. Then I realize I have to take everything off in order to use the bathroom. It's like the most embarrassing feeling when you're like in a public restroom <laughs> and you're like, this is really embarrassing. Um, so yes, handy dandy ways to use the restroom. Um, always knowing what the weather is going to be like. Getting stuck in 110 degree weather in a full leather outfit is really bad. I've ne you know when they're like that expression dripping sweat? Yeah, that, I know where that comes from now. It's really not, I was like, oh, God, I'm one of those people. <laughs> like, oh, God, I'm sweating. Um, so definitely those are kind of things that I think a lot of people kind of forget when you're making a costume that later on you're like, oh, God, that would have been really convenient. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to think of other embarrassing stories I might have. Um, 
I have sewn myself accidentally into a costume. <laughs> it's one of those, those last minute things where you're sitting there and you're like, oh gosh, I have to get this in. And then later on you're like, oh, okay, I'm ready to get, oh God, I, I don't have a way to get out of this thing. <laughs> and suddenly you're like looking for a seam ripper trying to take it all off. And um, you know, I've had pieces fall apart on me. I think it was last year here actually, I wore a uh, silk specter had never worked with really, really thin chiffon material. And you have to like really serger that and make sure that it's secure. And I did not do that. And about 10 minutes into the con, it started falling apart. Like my sleeves were like opening and it's like, and I just got a bathing suit on him under that. I'm like, I'm gonna end up just in a bathing suit walking around this convention uh, because it's all falling apart. So I was like in the back of my booth, hot glue gunning all my seams because that's all I had. I was like, gluing myself into this outfit, hoping that no one would notice. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. Hmm? Oh, props. I actually really like doing props, um, just because I like going into Home Depot and making people there think that I'm really weird. <laughs> you go in there and you're like, so I need this thing. I don't need it for anything, but it looks like this. And I need it to be like this big. And they're like, well, what's it for? And you're like, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> you're going to look at me. So I'm building this suit. <laughs> and then they just kind of look at you weird. And you know, when you sit there and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to grab this part for a toilet. And they're like, oh, you're fixing your toilet. No, I'm using that for a part of my skirt. <laughs> I literally have toilet parts on one of my skirts. Um, <laughs> so I, I love doing that. That's, that's one of those fun things. Um, I use like a lot of different stuff for props. Um, the big thing with props is having it lightweight and also durable, right? So a lot of balsa wood is really good. Expanding foam, um, you can get that at like Home Depot. It comes in a can and it's just a foam that expands as it goes. Make sure you wear gloves. Do not get it on your hand. You will end up with sticky fingers for a week. I literally, I, I couldn't pet my cat without coming out with like a fur like mitten. Um, so yes, wear gloves when you work with that stuff. It's, it's really good because you just spray it. Like say you wanted to make, I, I did a Master Roshi's like cane, which is kind of like this bulbous piece of wood looking thing. So I just took like a dowel rod, a big thick dowel rod, sprayed it with expanding foam. And then you just kind of cut away with it with a knife and get your general shape. Then I just took masking tape, actually, and wrapped it around the foam, so that way, you know, you're getting rid of all those holes that come out in the foam. And you're filling it all up and, and loop, you know, going over it. Some gesso, gesso is, I recommend the big buckets of gesso, because um, that's great for any prop making, anything where you want it to be smooth. Um, so gesso, and then you just sand it down and paint over. Um, so yeah, de definitely when making props, I recommend um, heat guns, expanding foam, warbla is awesome to work with. You can make a ton with it. It's kind of expensive, um, but you can really make anything with warbla. It's a thermoplastic. Uh, it comes in a big roll, kind of like a, a roll of paper, except that it's plastic. And you use just like a cheap, I got like a cheap uh, heat gun from, you know, Home Depot for 10 bucks, and you just heat it, it becomes flexible. You make it into whatever shape you want, and then as it cools down, it holds that shape. That's pretty much what I use for all of my armor. Um, it works magic. Oh, I think I saw you first. <laughs> I've definitely had those experiences. Um, I, just take, I, I just take a moment and I step away. For me, I, I usually make like two to three costumes at a time because I get frustrated and I'm like, I don't even wanna look at this. Like I just throw it in a corner and I won't look at it for two weeks and I'll work on something else. Um, for me, it's like I never wanna feel stressed out when I'm making a costume. I don't wanna get frustrated. So I just give myself time. You know, I work a little bit on one and a little bit on another and eventually you still get the same amount of costumes done. But for me, I feel it's like less str like stressful because when I'm like upset with something, I just leave it alone, walk away. Because I think if I work on something and I'm frustrated, it just turns out really horrible. So yeah, just, just walk away. Walk away and breathe and then come back to it. And yeah, that's usually what I do. It helps. <laughs> um. 
Okay, well, what's the weirdest thing you've heard? Okay, well, well, but what costume though? <laughs> I'm like, try toilet man. <laughs> like, how does that work? <laughs> My thing with that, well, that would be really heavy. See, I'd be like warbler, <laughs> warbler and expanding foam. But wow, yeah. And it, that's pretty weird. See, I was like. Something big like that would be kind of weird, except then I was like, okay, well, there's Saga. I don't know if anyone's reading Saga, the, uh, the comic series. And it's like people with giant TV screens for heads, or TV sets for heads. I'm like, that is God. And I see people walking around, I'm like, that has got to be heavy. You have like an old 80s like tube screen TV on your head. Um, so yeah, now I'm looking for a guy with a toilet seat on his head now. <laughs> I'm going to look for that one. Okay, let's see. So the first one, how do I stay motivated? For me, um, it's it's watching. A, I watch a lot of TV and a lot of like movies on in the background when I'm working on stuff. So it's like I put on shows that I know energize me, like stuff that I know is gonna get me in the mood. Or you know, if it's the character that I'm working on, I'll watch that while I'm doing. It. I'm like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. And then. You know, and like I said, if it ever starts getting frustrating, I just put it down, go outside, go do something, like, and come back in a little bit. Um, it's, it's hard, because you do, you get frustrated, you know, you get stressed out sometimes, you get, like, intimidated about a part of your costume. It's just walking away, taking a breather, and then coming back. Um, so, I, yeah, I just motivate myself with um, different TV shows. I mean, if I'm really in a rut, like, I'll call one of my cosplay friends and be like, dude, Motivate me. Tell me. Tell me something great about myself so I feel better. <laughs> like, tell me I'm awesome. Something. Um, so that's what I, I try to try to do for that. And then the one that I work the most on, I would have to say, would be my Castanic, and that has a lot of armor in it. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, armor's gonna be fun. This should be pretty easy. Until you realize that you have to know how to make joints work. You know. Um, one of the problems I had with one of my costumes, my Amikami Catwoman, it's all armor and you cannot walk in. I was like walking like a T-Rex, like around the convention, because I couldn't flex my foot. I realized after I'd made it that I was like, oh, wait, I can't really, can't really flex my foot in this, so I'm just going to stomp around New York Comic Con. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I think armor is one of those ones where you really have to map it out. You have to, okay, well, if I make something for the shoulder, it's got to be hinged here so that way I can move my arm this way. Or if you do something for the shoulder, you can't have it like way down here or else you'll never be able to move your arm this way. So um, armor is a lot of planning. It's a lot of, you know, uh, another hard part with it is how am I going to get it to attach to my body? Um, and then the lady behind you, I can see, has a lot of armor on. <laughs> and so I'm sure she knows what I'm talking about. Um, you know, how are you... How are you going to attach it and make sure, you know, stuff doesn't slide down and fall off? And, um, and then you have to always worry about what happens if someone bumps into me and am I going to poke someone's eye out? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that one took me about six months altogether just because of all the planning. And um, I would make parts of it on, in paper first. So, like, all the armor pieces for here, anything that would be movable, I would make it in paper and then take, like, um, what are those little push pins that you pull, put through paper and then you can pull the sides apart so it moves? Yeah, I would take Brad, thank you. I take Brad's and I would use those as the joints so that way I could actually put the paper version on myself and make sure that it's flexible and moves. Um, it takes more time, but it saves you so much money and effort when you don't have to start all over. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I, for natural, more natural looking stuff, I go with like gothic Lolita wigs. I also live in DC currently, which we have a lot of wig stores, um, which is awesome. Um, and then a lot of ones I do online, I go to eBay. Um, I have like this thing for uh, front lace wigs, because I feel like they look really natural. 
um, but they tend to be really expensive. So eBay is generally a good place to find those. Um, and the only part of it that really sucks is you have to like glue it to your skin, <laughs> which is a pain to get off later when you're ripping your hair off and your scalp. <laughs> But yeah, so I would recommend eBay. Um, Epic Cosplay Wigs is also another good source. And Arda Wigs. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me something about turtles, Cassie. <laughs> um, well, I mean, so I did my April O'Neil. Um, I, yeah, I'm a big Turtles fan. I don't know if anyone saw the trailer. That was kind of sad. <laughs> uh, we won't go into my, my opinions on the new Turtle movie. There was no Cowabunga. There's no, there's no Master Splinter. Like, has anyone seen anything about Master Splinter no, yet? There, they haven't revealed anything other than the one that the actor play, playing him. That's it. See, I just, I'm like, this is really scary. And then, yeah, there's so many changes to it. I'm like, how did he learn? If he's a lab rat, then how did he learn Kung Fu? <laughs> like, how did he, like, did they have Bruce Lee movies playing in the background? And the I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's going to be, but yeah. No, I, I would love to do, like, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, cosplay. I just don't know how you necessarily become Raphael as a female. <laughs> Raffaella? Yeah. There is Venus de Milo, yeah. There is a... Which one? Oh, there's... Oh, yeah, there's no Casey Jones in the movie, too. Oh. Yeah, I don't know about Megan... F I was like, didn't you guys have, like, a beef after... No. Yeah, I thought they didn't get along, and then I was like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just hoping that it's all going to be like one big April Fool's Day joke, and at the end of this weekend, they're just going to be like, just kidding. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, though, <laughs> but there's, there's hope. April Fool's, maybe. <laughs> we can all dream. <laughs> Anyone? You know, I just use, I use like the, the cheapy acrylic paints, to be honest. Um, for me, it tends to be more of what kind of protectant or sealer you use. Because, um, I mean, really, you can use any kind of paint. I mean, some paints are cheaper than others, and they don't have as much pigment in them. So you have to do more layers. Um, so more expensive paints are nice because you don't have to do as many layers of it to get the color that you want. Um, but I generally go with kind of cheapy acrylic paints and then use like a really good sealer on it so that way um, you know you don't have to worry about stuff chipping or fading or anything like that. Um, you know I get like a polyurethane uh, sealant spray. Um, it's like for wicker furniture that you use for outdoor stuff. But it tends to work really well. Um, just make sure you use it in a well-ventilated space and not your 900-square-foot apartment. <laughs> I live in an apartment complex. It's, I'm like nine stories up, and it's winter time in D.C., so it's like snowing. I'm like, I'm not going to go outside to spray paint. I'll just open some windows. Three hours later, I'm like, okay, this is not such a good idea. <laughs> like, I think I need some fresh air now. <laughs> That's hard. Like I said, you know, I have a really small apartment. Storage is a problem. Um, I use a lot of, like, I move, I try to store up. Okay. That's the thing. So I just get really cheap, but, um, like, those uh, wire, like, shelving units that you can get, they're pretty inexpensive. But it's basically building up um, and having more room. Like, uh, I, in my closet, I've actually built, like, really just cheap shelving that I can keep all my wig heads on. And, I mean, they're way up there, but they're out of the way, and it, and it helps kind of keep everything stored. So, um, yeah, go up. <laughs> What's your favorite experience when you're cosplaying at a, at a Comic-Con? What would be your number one? <laughs> you two, <laughs> you two know me too well. See, this is like the spies in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I got these. Um, John Barrowman. 
And then you knew I was going to say it. John Berryman was the best experience. Zatanna. Um, John Berryman, for those of you that don't know, is Captain Jack Harkness um, on Torchwood and Doctor Who. Um, I was at San Diego Comic Con just passing by his booth, and, and he had no one in line. I was like, are you kidding me? No one's at, they're like, do you want to get in line? Like, hey, yeah, I'll get in line. So um, I go up to him, and I'm kind of like chest level to him. And Zatona is kind of a revealing outfit. It's one of my more revealing ones. And he just would not stop with the certain attraction to this area. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm like, but I thought you were gay. He's like, but I appreciate boobs. He's like, I may be a gay man, but come on. We s so then he's like, and his husband's there. He's like, hey, honey, come over here. Come look at these. And I'm like, I'm just like, this is so, this is so embarrassing. And then he's like, no, no, my publicist would love this. Hold on. Suddenly he's just, his husband's there, his publicist. I'm just like, wow, this is kind of, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, this is, this is kind of a, Kind of uncomfortable, but great at the same time. Um, <laughs> so I'm like jokingly like, hey, you know, if, if you like, you want to sign one? I've never asked anyone to sign a part of my body before, but I'm just like, hey, it's John Behrman. And he's like, well, I don't want to ruin your outfit. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not ruining anything. No, no. And so, and his husband's all like, yeah, do it. I'm like, this is so weird. So John Behrman's like, <laughs> and my friends are there, and, he, and he's like, we need to take a picture of this. And so his husband's got his cell phone out, my friend's got his cell phone out. John Berman's like this. <laughs> and he gets my two friends, and he's like, you guys should creep on the picture like you're photobombing. So basically the picture is me, like this big cheesy smile on my face, just like cheesing it. And John Berman like this. And then my two friends like... <laughs> It was the craziest experience I've ever, that was, and then, and then he signed the other one at Drag. <laughs> <laughs> he remembered me. <laughs> and I was talking to his husband, and he's like, yeah, you should have him sign the other one to balance it out. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. So yeah, that, <laughs> that would be one of my funniest and craziest experiences ever. <laughs> I, know, I love you too, thank you. <laughs> Oh, no, there's a lot that are probably not appropriate <laughs> in a conversation. Um, no, actually, I have, I have great fans, and I actually haven't had too much. Um, the weirdest, um, I have asked, had people ask, like, especially in Supergirl, to, like, sit on them. It was, it was like a bane, and he wanted me to sit on his back. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm kind of heavy. Um... You get people that are like, hey, I want to take a picture, but can you, like, jump off of this thing at the same time? And you're like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> um, yeah, funny pictures are, like, my favorite thing. I love doing, like, weird, crazy pictures. Like, um, I've had, I've been picked up for pictures. That was really kind of crazy. You're always like, please don't drop me, please don't drop me, please don't drop me. Um, let's see, what other crazy things have been asked? See, now I'm blanking. I mean, there's just so many um, funny things that happen at conventions, I'm trying to think. Hung out with a bunch of Power Rangers last week. That, that was weird. That's one of those things you're like, I'm hanging out with Power Rangers? What is going on? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, let's see, funny things. I don't, I don't know. I'm blanking now. Uh, anyone? I think. Um, you know, Facebook used to be, like, my primary source of, like, putting on my stuff, but they've really changed things where, you know, you can't see things. I mean, I can't even see things my friends post, and, and it's kind of sad. Yeah, I think it's, like, now they've made it where only 1% to 2% of people on your page actually see what you post, which is really sad. Um, so I use a lot of Instagram. Instagram's great for pictures. Um, it's great. Like, I use that for all of my, like, 
anytime I have pictures that I want to put out there. And then Twitter is just me just saying random stuff all the time in <laughs> pictures. But um, I would say Instagram um, is becoming a big place for cosplay pictures right now. Um, a lot of cosplayers are using it because it's, it's a great forum for, for putting photos out there, except that you're limited to like a square. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I don't want to crop everything. Insta size is a great app on your phone that will make it so you can do bigger stuff on Instagram. But yeah, I'd recommend going there now. I can tell you have a passion for this. I mean, as a kid, your answers. But uh, my question is, uh, is it as fun as it used to be when you first started? Do you, do you find it still as much fun? I try to make sure. That's the thing. Like, I do this, and yeah, it's kind of a job. I mean, I still have like a job at home, and and you know, I'm because I mean, cosplay. You can't survive on cosplay alone. You just can't. It's not a full time job. Um, but, and that's the thing, I don't ever want this to become a job. Like, the minute this starts feeling like a job and not fun, I, I don't want to do it, you know? Um, for me, it's like, I know that I have to limit how many cons I go to. Because after a while, it's like, it just feels like it's too much, you know? Um, I don't have time to put together costumes. You know, I, I try to go to as many conventions as I can, but then after a while, it's like, I've had no time to work on stuff. Um, so for me, I try to keep it fun. I try to limit the number I go to, so that way I still have time to actually put together stuff, which is what I love. Um, I try to make sure that I have conventions that I go to that it's like, I'm not working. Nope, I am just hanging out with friends. I am just gonna, you know, go be an attendee and have fun. You know, San Diego Comic Con, I'm going to panels. I'm gonna go get my autographs. I'm gonna go to all the booths. I just wanna have fun. Dragon Con, totally just fun con. Um, so I think it's just, you know, mixing the two and making sure that you never book yourself so much where you feel like it's it's work. You know, just keeping it fun and, and making sure that you have fun. My job? Huh? No, no. I have a mother of a cat. He's a handful. <laughs> he really is like a kid, actually. He's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and I miss my cat. He's, he's old and, and feisty, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, um, yeah. It's, it's really hard. Like, I was working a nine to five, like a regular desk job. I was recruiting for Microsoft and a couple other companies. So um, I realized that with as much travel as I do, I really couldn't. So right now, it's more like part time, like things that I can do, uh, you know, waitressing or, um, you know, bartending, stuff like that. I'm doing like a couple um, transcribing stuff for the city, just like picking up odd jobs here and there. Um, just because I like to keep myself busy, and, and like I said, it's, it's finding that balance of something that will allow you to have that flexibility, for, at least for me, to travel um, and still be able to make money. So it's, before when I was working a nine to five, it was, you know, always trying to find that time after work where you can come home and, you know, work on your costumes, and I'd have to like limit myself, or I'd be up to like two in the morning working on a costume. So it's like, okay, from like six to eight, I'll work on costumes and then I should relax, you know. Um, it's just making time for yourself and don't overwhelm yourself so you still kind of have a life outside of work and just costume making. Three days was the fastest. I never want to do that again. <laughs> um, it's very stressful and a lot of um, overnight shipping of boots, um, <laughs> which gets really expensive. The longest was six months, which was that um, armor one, and it, that one's just, it's because it's a lot of pre-planning. Um, anytime you work with armor, it's a lot of pre-planning and, and uh, drying times make things take a lot of time. I mean, if things could just dry instantly, I would be so happy. <laughs> I'm like the worst at waiting for things to dry. That's why I work on three costumes at the same time. Because it's like, while this is drying, I'll work on this one. And then um, kind of alternate. So yeah, between three days to six months, depending on what I'm doing and kind of what it takes to make it. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, Andrew. <laughs> Like 
I want to do something big. I want to do a mecha. I want to do like a giant Gundam suit or like a like a Warhammer Warhammer 40k like big like space suit. Yeah, I want to do something like that. I just want to do something where I like I take off the helmet and people are like, what? Little tiny little tiny girl in a big mech suit. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Actually, um, I saw someone that they had done. Uh, what are they called from the alien movies? The big giant cage that she walks in? I want one of those. I just want something big and mechanical and hulking. Did they? Oh, I just want to ride around one of those. Yeah. <sighs> Find me at my booth. I got to see that. No, but yeah, I think it's, it's like Napoleon complex. I'm like five foot two. I want something huge. <laughs> I wouldn't get around anywhere at the con, but. At work, um, only on Halloween, and I always win the Halloween costumes at work, which is awesome. <laughs> it's like, ha yeah, your pirate cannot beat my, you know, original Star Trek outfit. No, um, no, I, I have it at work. It's funny because I have some jobs that I've had that know what I do, and there's some that are very hush hush. Microsoft was awesome; no one cared. <laughs> they're all like, that's awesome. Um, and then I've had some jobs where it's like, they're like, oh, well, what do you do on the side? I make costumes and I wear them. Oh, what kind of costumes? Superheroes. And they look at you and they're like, okay, you're one of those. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's one of those things like sometimes I have, it's fun when you have a job that allows you to. But as long as I work from, well, I was working from home and that was awesome because it was like, I could wear anything. <laughs> um, God, I'm like so thankful for a lot of the opportunities I've gotten. I've, I've gotten to work with Jeff Matsuda, who did um, the Jackie Chan Adventures. He's the artist for Jackie Chan Adventures. He also did a lot of Batman two Buffy variant covers. Um, I got to work with him on Comic Conquest, which is an upcoming video game that they want to do, um, working on original character design for that. Um, I've gotten to meet some amazing people, um, some amazing artists that I never thought I'd meet. Um, I've fangirled a lot. I've cried in front of people. <laughs> I have cried in front of artists. It's really embarrassing. I, I do like fangirl. Um, I've met some amazing people um, that I can now call friends. Uh, being able to travel and go to different places is cool. Sometimes I only get to see the convention center, <laughs> but I can say I've been to that city. I mean, I've, I've been to Phoenix. I may have only seen the convention center, but I've been to Phoenix. <laughs> There's cactuses there. <laughs> I do know that. Um, but no, I, I've, I've gotten to work with different companies, uh, wig companies, and I, I um, like contact lens companies. Um, it's been really cool. It's, it's amazing, and I'm like thankful for every minute of it, because I never, this is not anything I would have ever expected. This is, it's so crazy. This is crazy to me, being up here, and you guys are in here. This is, thank you, by the way. <laughs> Can I just say thank you to all of you, because... I was like, there's going to be one person in the front just like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you, guys. Yeah, it's crazy. The more I get into it, the more, like, friends I've made. It's, it's crazy how kind of close-knit we all get. We all kind of know each other. Um, it's like having tons of friends that live really, really far away from you. <laughs> it's like you end up making these great friends and then you realize that they live all the way on the other side of the country from you. Um, so it's a lot of Skyping, a lot of FaceTime, um, but it's been great. Like I, I really love the community. Everyone tries to be really, you know, super helpful. Um, and it's just, you know, you, you find those people that are like-minded like you and have the same kind of values and you like the same things and yeah, you just make great friends. So cosplay equals friends, it's awesome. <laughs> I 
I try to. That's and that's why it's really hard for me. I'm kind of like a stickler when it comes to like I try as hard as I can. Um, and sometimes that's why it takes me so long because I'm like, oh, I want this to be exactly like it's supposed to be, you know, on the reference material. And sometimes that's really hard because if you ever look at especially anime costumes, sometimes that is not actually physically possible. Like there is no way your dress is going to go like this all by itself without, you know. So, so sometimes it's really hard because you have to put a lot of thought into how am I going to make this, you know? Like, is this even feasible at all? Um, so for, it, it can be hard, I try. I definitely try. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, you know, groups are fun, just because I think everyone kind of, you feel this vibe with each other and everyone kind of feeds off of each other while you're making your costume. Everyone's like talking about it and it's, it's great for motivation. Um, you get really motivated because everyone's like, oh, I'm doing this and you kind of feed off of each other. But then sometimes it can be kind of stressful. You know, I have had instances where people have dropped out last minute and you just got to go with the flow and just have fun with it. Um, I, I like it. I, I think it's a lot of fun to have other people that you're kind of with and um, you get to experience it together, so. Plus when you have groups and like someone is good at armor and someone's good at sewing, you know, you kind of get to work together and, and piece it all together as a group, so. Two wigs. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, so like I've had horns on things before. You can go like the traditional route of like the headband. Um, I've seen people that have actually like cut the weft, like a small part of the weft out so that they can stick things through. Um, so basically headband on the bottom, holes in the weft, and then putting it through. Um, another way is if like you have horns or something to have it where um, maybe there's like holes in it, so that way you can actually sew it directly to the wig. Um, so that's another option as well. Um, it's it's a lot of sewing it to the, the weft and then um, depending on what it is, wiring really helps to um, keep it on your head. Like I'll do like a wire like this and then the wire sticking up so it's got something to support it here. And then you've got the wire sticking up and then like I did bunny ears that way. And then you can kind of like, you know, make your bunny ears go whichever way you want them to. And so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> What's the most expensive costume you've ever worked on? How much? Ooh. Um, I would have to say anything involving armor, just because warbler is really, really expensive. A jumbo roll is like 80 bucks. Um, and usually you need like three or four of those sometimes for, for full armor. Um, I want to do a Power Rangers outfit really bad and the helmets alone are $390. That's my next one I'm saving up for. That's, so yeah, they get pricey, like custom built, you know. Um, so yeah, that w that's probably going to end up being my most expensive because like with the materials alone and then all of that, yeah. I haven't decided. I, I like SPD, or not SPD, I like uh, RPM. I, I want to do the silver one because, well, she's Asian, so I want to do the silver one. But she has an annoying thing with her twin where they finish each other's sentences, and I'm like, oh. And then there's uh, the samurai ones. I like the pink ranger on there. Um, and her name is Mia on the show, so I was like, hey, that works. But I want to be the yellow ranger because, you know. <laughs> We're not going to say why, but I've always had an affinity for the Yellow Ranger. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to pick which one I want to be. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Because I got I, I to feel the character. You know, that's my thing. The hardest to get out of. The Catwoman armor. Because, I mean, it's like... I almost can't move in it anyways, and then to get in, it's like a specific, okay, this has to go first, then this, and then this part, and then I have to have someone help me with this, and it's, it's really a lot, like the more pieces you have, the more help you need, <laughs> is usually uh, how that works.
Well, I think we have time for what? One more question? That one's hard for me, too. Because, I mean, it's like I watch so many movies. I watch so much TV. So it's like constant, like, I want to do that. I want to do that. It's like ADD, like, okay, I want to do this one and that one and this one. And if I did that, I would have, like, 10% of, like, 100 costumes ready. <laughs> so, um, you know, for me, it's, it's kind of looking at what the weather is going to be like in that time. Um, and just uh, and looking at, you know, what's my favorite characters? Like, who do I really want to be? And is it, a, you know, is it something that I want to wear to this convention? Um, but, yeah, I just I choose characters that I love, and that's kind of the problem because I love so many characters that it makes it really hard. I should just put, like, all the names in a hat and draw one out and be like, and today I'm going to be Psylocke. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm building next. So, yeah, I have, like, a list this long. And just throw a dart at it, and that's the one I'm going to do <laughs> next. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so thank you guys for, seriously, thank you guys for coming to my panel. I really didn't expect anyone to come. <laughs> so I'm, s I, I'm just like, it's, it's an hour about me. This is the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to fill this time. So thank you guys for coming and asking questions. So I'm not up here going, um. And, <laughs> and uh, you guys all enjoy the con. Have fun. Get everything done that you want to. And if you want to, stop by my booth. I'm on, like, the other side of this area. And uh, have fun, guys. Thank you so much.
Hey. Hey, Kevin, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Good. Uh, so I guess the, the name places are kind of haphazard. It looks like you're on the end, but we can move if you want. Okay, unless the other guys want to go up and down. <laughs> Sounds good. There was a little bit of a challenge to finding the room. I just mm -hmm. realized what section we're here. And there's like two 301s? Is there? Yeah, there's a 301 next door. And then yeah. there's a, is there a second 306? I'm going to ask you to. I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> At first, it's going to sound ridiculous. But the longer oh, I talk, we have to find the okay. keys. The more rational it's going to appear. I can't believe you found coffee. Sugar, right? Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Three. Like three. How many times have we been here? How many times? For me, it's been an eternity. The invasion will fail. We lose everything. I die within five minutes of landing on that beach, along with every other soldier. How did you do that? Come on! Come find me when you wake up! You happen to me. You hijacked their power. How do I control it? You have to die. Ah! Every day. Keep coming here and I'll train you. Again, again. Your leg's broken. No, I'm good. Then you better start over. Oh, come on. I'm not a soldier. Of course you're not. You're a weapon. They want to conquer the rest of the world. Unless you change the outcome. We are not equipped for what's out there. How many times have we been here? What are you not telling me? It's gonna be dark in a few hours. We'll curl up by the fire and open a bottle of wine. We should just reset. Whoa! You found the bathroom. Yeah, did you? I mean, was it? I did, but that yeah, was good. Like, it was like practically couldn't have been any closer to my table from like where I started. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's good that you walked all that way over and uh, yeah. had to come back. So, are you guys okay with just uh, going down the line and introducing yourselves? Yeah. Is that good? Sure. That was always my least favorite thing in the new first day of the new term, but. It helps if everyone says your name after you say it. <laughs> Should have done that in school. Yeah. <coughs> so he's gonna get. He's gonna find out about the whiteboards for tomorrow. 